Hey, what's up everyone? James here with an awesome little project. I've been working on this for months. I think I finally finished the code in December. I've been kind of waiting on the weather and some other things to kind of finish up, but let me show you what I got. This is probably one of the more in-depth things I've done. So we got a laptop and I have this device, which is powered by a two cell LiPo. On the inside we've got an Arduino. We've got an SD breakout board, so for putting in an SD card. And also the back, can't really see it, but there's a nice little piece of equipment called a three axis accelerometer. And I'm gonna use all those things to record how many G-forces we can pull on an RC airplane. So this is kind of one of those questions I get a lot. You know, people ask like, hey, how high does it go? How fast does it go? How many G-forces can you pull? So I'm trying to answer that question right now. It's not in like the nicest package. It still needs some work as far as how it looks. I can definitely make it smaller and lighter. But for now, this is gonna be more of a proof of concept. So the biggest problem I have right now is exactly how I'm gonna mount this. And I didn't really think about it, so once I get it mounted, I'll show you how I've got it done, and then we'll go for a quick test flight and take a look at the data. All right, so I've got everything mounted, and you're probably asking yourself, you know, why go through all the time to uh, code everything and figure this out and then not figure out how to mount it? Doesn't that seem a little silly? Yes, it's actually a really terrible way to do this, but that's how we're doing it. So I've got the battery for the logger on top of my flight pack, and then all the way in the bottom of the plane, I have the logger, which this isn't the best way to do it. It's going to cause a lot of drag and might not even work, but for now, for testing, it's going to be okay. I just got it Velcroed and then strapped down. So I literally only want this to record a minute or two of data just to see what I get. But that's how it's going to work. So the next thing to do is going to be uh, to fly this bad boy. Now I will say that the flight video isn't going to be spectacular. I'm not going to try and do a whole bunch of 3D stuff because I do have a bunch of extra weight on the nose and on the bottom of the airplane. So it's not gonna be the most beautiful flight. The goal is only to be up for about a minute or two, try and do a couple, maybe one or two maneuvers and then come down and we'll take a look at the data on my laptop. All right, so we got that flight done. Here's the pretty much the process. So I'm gonna flip the plane over carefully by myself. I don't have a helper today. All right. So there's the logging unit. And there's the SD card. There we go. Take that out. And then we'll take it over to the computer and see what happens. All right, so I just pulled the values and I'll show you what they look like on the uh, PC. So pretty much once you put in the SD card, it will pull up a text file that looks like this. And I'll have actual screenshots in a different video, but this is just for now. And it has all the different values that I've recorded during the time that the recorder ran. So then I take this data and I put it into Excel and I split everything. Oh, this is a freaking touch screen but I split everything up the way it should be. And now, over here, I have my largest values and my smallest values. So it looks like the max value we got was 2.68 Gs, and then we also had a value of negative 2.01 G. So G forces don't work in just one direction, they're either positive or negative, so plus or minus four Gs in both directions. So that's some pretty cool information in that flight, I wouldn't say was very aggressive. I feel like it could be way worse. So 2Gs, negative 2Gs, but I do want to show you why this isn't completely accurate and what the next step of this process is. So we know that we can pull anywhere from around 2.68 to negative 2Gs. Now what does that mean? Well, it doesn't mean much at this point because G-forces and all this stuff as far as to my knowledge, I'm not a physicist or do I claim to be one, I just kind of made this. It all depends on where you're reading from. So right now I'm reading from around the center of gravity, but if I read off a sensor on the tail or a sensor on the wing, things would be a little bit different. Also, it depends on how you mount the board itself. So the actual gyro has an orientation and that has to be mounted correctly. Now, 
I was kind of in a rush to get this done, but I wanted to prove the concept that you could actually log the data and take a look at it, and it does work. So the next step is going to be refining this. I'm going to make a more small system. I'm going to condense down the size of the actual unit itself so it's not a pain to mount. So that's going to be the next step, but uh, it's going to be in the future. I don't want to put all my time into this, but I think it's going to be pretty cool. Thanks for watching. If you are interested in the code or how I did this, I'll gladly do another video with how I did it. But for now, I'll see you all next time.